A very good evening and a warm welcome to this Wednesday night's edition of Primetime News. I'm Salima Shumwe Feleni Masipa. As always, if it's your first time joining us, do subscribe, hit the like button and be sure to click on the notifications bell to stay up to date with the latest happenings locally and globally. In tonight's top story, leaders of the Landless People's Movement, LPM, today paid a courtesy visit to President Dr. Hage Gengob. Edward Mumbo Jr. was at State House and covered the proceedings. Former allies and short-time rivals President Dr. Hage Gengob and Landless People's Movement, LPM leader Bernardo Swatboy appear to have put their differences aside following the latter surprise visit today. The last time Swartboy set foot in State House was in 2017 when Gengob summoned him to explain remarks he had made about his former Supremo and Land Reform Minister at the time, Utoni Nyoma. Swartboy would go ahead to quit the ruling party before resigning from the National Assembly. Whether the two have now smoked the piss pipe remains a mystery, as details about the meeting remain sketchy due to the fact that the media was barred from attending. According to Swartboy, the meeting is in the best interest of Namibians. The meeting, which Swatboy described as a good meeting, covered a plethora of issues ranging from land reform, operationalizing of Nelkatal Dam, genocide, to bureaucracy around the funding of local authorities and regional councils. On its part, the presidency did not avail any details around the meeting. Namibia has weighed in on the happenings in Burkina Faso with Executive Director in the Ministry of International Relations and Cooperation, Penda Nanda, saying Namibia is concerned by the political situation in that country where a coup d'etat toppled President Rock Mark, Christian Kabore, recently. Erasmus Shaliahwe compiled this report. In a media statement issued on Tuesday, Nanda said that Namibia remains resolute in its stance on zero tolerance in regards to ascending to power through unconstitutional means, which is in line with the principles of the African Union and the African Charter on Democratic Elections and Governance that call for the condemnation and rejection of unconstitutional change of governments in line of the AU's commitment to silencing of the guns in Africa. He said that Namibia supports the efforts expressed by the economic community of West African states during their extraordinary summit that took place on the 8th of January 2022. Under the chairmanship of Nana Akafu Ado, president of Ghana, who is demanding the immediate release of Bungino Faso president Kabore and all the other political attainees, and the restoration of constitutional order and return of government to civilian rule. He added that Namibia calls upon the international community to extend all possible support to the people of Bungino Faso in their quest to find a democratic solution and restore sustained peace and stability. The city of Ventuk will receive 36 million Namibian dollars from the European Union to improve solid waste management and help in reducing adverse impacts of waste materials on human health as well as the environment. This is made possible through an agreement signed between the city of Winduk and the EU here Tuesday. In her remarks while signing the agreement, Winduk Mayor said Governors said improved solid waste management will not only reduce and eliminate adverse impacts of waste materials on human health and the environment but also supports economic development and superior quality of life. She said the project will support the 2018 National Waste Management Strategy which aims to make Namibia a leading country in Africa in terms of standards of waste management by 2028, while at the municipal level, the project will support Windows Integrated Waste Management Plan, which envisions to achieve a total waste reduction of zero waste within the city. The EU head of delegations to Namibia, Sinika Antila, on her part said the project will promote the shift towards a more sustainable model known as the circular economy for Windu and for Namibia as a whole, will support resource efficiency and will create much-needed employment opportunities at various stages. Moving on to continental news, aid agencies on Tuesday called on donors to urgently fund the drought crisis in Somalia, where 7.7 .7 million people are in urgent need of humanitarian aid. Xinhua brings us more. The agencies including Save the Children, Norwegian Refugee Council, Action Aid, and Care International, amongst others, under the umbrella of the Somalia Non-Governmental Organization Consortium, expressed deep concern about the lives of millions of Somalis facing a severe food crisis and are in urgent need of humanitarian aid. The agency said 98% of the current Somalia humanitarian appeal of 1.46 billion U.S. dollars has yet to be met and remains severely underfunded. 
The aid agency said 7.7 million people in various locations across Somalia are currently witnessing a shocking increase in humanitarian needs as the rains fail for a third consecutive season, possibly the worst drought in 40 years. The agency said a predicted 1.4 million people will be displaced in the coming months, congesting already overcrowded displacement camps and generating conflict over resources. Experts are warning of a risk of famine as predictions for the next rainy season are worrying. The agencies warned that the next few months are thus extremely critical to urgently respond to the needs on the ground. Reporting for Nampa News, I am Sawi Hausiku. Stand by for your top roundup. The oil and petroleum sector leads our business and economic segment tonight. Top oil producing countries led by Saudi Arabia and Russia announced another modest increase in output today despite soaring crude prices and geopolitical tensions rattling the markets. The 23-nation OPEC Plus group said in a statement that it will increase production by 400,000 barrels per day in March, the same amount as in previous months. AFP brings us this insert. The group, which includes the 13 members of the Saudi-led organization of the petroleum exporting countries OPEC and their 10 allies including Russia, has resisted U.S. pressure to further boost production to tame prices. OPEC Plus said in a statement following a ministerial video conference that the decision was made in view of current oil market fundamentals and the consensus on the outlook. The alliance prudent approach dates back to the spring of 2021 as demand recovered after drastic 2020 cuts on the face of the COVID-19 pandemic. Edward Gardner, commodities expert at Capital Economics, said the announcement today was hardly surprising as the group has rigidly followed this approach since it was first agreed upon, even in December when oil prices plunged following the emergence of Omicron. He further noted that what matters going forward is whether OPEC Plus can keep up with its planned production increases. Shifting attention to the pharmaceutical sector, drug manufacturing giants Pfizer and BioNTech have asked the U.S. Food and Drug Administration to approve their COVID-19 vaccine for children between the ages of six months and five years of age. DPA gives us more. If authorization is granted, the vaccine would be the first COVID-19 vaccine available for pediatric populations under the age of five. The companies expect to complete the emergency use of authorization submission in the coming days. The application is for authorization of the first two three microgram doses of a planned three-dose primary series in the age group. Data on a third dose given at least eight weeks after completion of the second dose are expected in the coming months and will be submitted to the FDA to support a potential expansion of the requested EUA, the company said in a statement. The FDA's Vaccine and Related Biological Products Advisory Committee will meet on February 15th to discuss the request for emergency use authorization of the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine for the age group. The FDA authorized the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine for use in children 5 through 11 years of age in October 2021 and recently authorized the use of a single booster dose in individuals 12 through 15 years of age and older. Reporting for Nampa News, Isabel Bento, Ventuk. That's all the top news we had for you tonight. Stay tuned for the Economics Roundup, followed by the Weather Forecast.
A warm welcome to All Things Sport on Sport Planet with me, Michael Madimba. We kickstart this midweek sports installment with local news. Brave Gladiators interim head coach Woody Jacobs says his charges will qualify for the Women's Africa Cup of Nations tournament scheduled for Morocco in October. Jacobs was speaking at a press conference in the capital today where he announced a strong squad of players who will play Zambia in the final qualifying round on the 16th and the 23rd of February. Zambia is a formidable opponent. They have been to the last Olympics and they beat us in the Kosafa Cup last year, but we have studied them. It will be a different ball game because everything is at stake, he said. Jacobs added that some of the girls had been playing for the national team from the age of 13, meaning they are now experienced. The coach said he has confidence that his team will qualify for both the Women's Africa Cup of Nation and the Women's World Cup because of the hard work that has been put in by everyone involved. With regards to Zanata Coleman, I spoke to her and she did train with the team. From me, what she said in the media and what she did are two different things. I need her, the team needs her, and I told her that, he explained. Jacobs added that his team is on the brink of making history by qualifying for a major tournament by beating some formidable teams. Staying with football. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang says the man of his departure from Arsenal hurts as he edges closer to a move to Barcelona. DPA sheds more light on this. The 32-year-old former Gunners captain was pictured training with his prospective new teammates after arriving in Spain on Monday. Confusion reigned, however, when no agreement was reached as deadline day passed, but his release by Arsenal now makes him a free agent. Prior to the completion of his move to the Camp Nou, Aubameyang took to social media on Tuesday night to post a farewell message to the club he has called home since 2018. In a post on Instagram, Obama Young wrote to the Arsenal fans, Thank you for making London my home for myself and my family the past four years. We went through ups and downs together and your support meant everything to me. The PA News Agency understands that talks progressed with the La Liga side on Monday and a deal releasing him from his £250 a week basic salary at the Emirates Stadium means he can join the Catalan Giants outside of the transfer window. Your sports roundup is up next. With that, we've come to the end of the Primetime News Midweek Edition. Thanks for joining us. A kind reminder that if you're new to this channel, please subscribe, like, share, and click on the notifications bell to stay posted on the freshest happenings locally and internationally. Do feel free to add your comments as well in the comment section. Catch us tomorrow for your Thursday edition of Primetime News. From myself, Michael Madimba, and the entire production crew, it's good night. <laughs>